Hello, welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic, uh, where we're going to continue looking at some of these puzzles that appeared in the National Sudoku Championship last weekend, um, which Mark, of course, won. Um, now, this puzzle was suggested to us by Tom Collier, who is, uh, I think he's won, won the championship four times. I might be might be getting that number slightly wrong, but it's, it's, it's multiple times. Um, and he thought this was probably the most difficult puzzle of the set. So it's certainly worth our attention. Um, so what I'll do is I'll, I'll I'll sort of live solve it now and talk through what I'm thinking. Um, you can see immediately you can place a one here. Just uh, that straightforward Sudoku. Um, nothing clever there. And five here by the same logic. Look, and I'll make the usual pencil mark. So in any three by three block, if I manage to limit a number to just one of two positions. Um, then I will allow myself to mark that like this with the nines on this box here. Um, ditto down there. Uh, central cell. That looks very restricted to me. That can only be a four, I think. Let's put that in. Pencil mark the fours up there, look. And fours down there. Fours over here. Ones over here. See, this cell has to be a five, and that's going to give us immediately a nine as well, because as soon as we eliminate or we place a five here, we knew the nine could only go in one of two positions because of our pencil mark. So it can now only go in this last cell. Um, so now you can see three and seven in that central box into these two positions, which allows us to see that this must be a six. We can make some more pencil marks. And this cell here has to be a six. So it's the only place that a six can now go in this three by three block and we can pencil mark sevens and eights in like that. Eights up here as a consequence and sevens interestingly. So now we know that there must be a three down column four in one of these three positions and you can see we can do that and that isolates this cell. This cell can only be a four now. Now these puzzles, just to remind you, these aren't monstrously hard. Um, oh, that's interesting, look at that. Um, so you can see there's a 7 here. I noticed with this 7 here it was allowing me to pencil mark these two 7s, but there's also a 2 here and a 2 here. So by the same logic I can do that. Now as soon, that's one of the advantages of these pencil marks, as soon as I identify that I've got two cells here that contain the numbers 2 and 7, this cell cannot contain a 5 anymore. Uh, if it does, there's nowhere to place 2 and the 7. We could only put one of them in this cell. So I now know this cell here must be a 5. Um, let's put that in. Uh, and that's also going to allow me to pencil mark 8 look up there, which allows me to pencil mark 8 over here. Five, nine. You can see this looking at the central row of the grid, we've got to place the numbers two, five, and nine along here. And this cell can't contain a five, so the five's going to have to be in one of those two positions in row five. Two, two. You can see we can pencil mark twos here. There's still lots of pencil marks we haven't done yet. That has to be a three by simple Sudoku rules. Pencil mark some threes over that side. Some are ones in those two positions. That gives us more pencil marks. There's certainly a lot of, uh, of ability to put pencil marks into this puzzle. Um, sixes. One, four, seven, nine along the bottom. You can see actually there's a seven here and a seven here. So there's only two places left for a seven, and that's in these two positions. So let's note that down. 
Um, okay. Put some on nines there. Which means, ah, so that has to be a nine now in the corner. Four, six. Ah, okay, now that's tricky. There, This cell here I think has to be a one. So if we look down column nine here, um, and this is a real, um, I suppose it's a very good tip if you are using the pencil mark method we recommend. You can see we need to place the numbers one, three, four, and six. Now you mustn't be lazy when you look at the crossings here. Um, so you can see here there's nothing apart from these fours. This one here, this one here, but the critical thing you have to notice is these ones here and here. It's very easy to miss them if, if, you, if you train your brain to just look at the big numbers when you're looking at the crossings. You need to look at the pencil marks too, and if we do, you can see that there's only now actually one position that a one can go in column 9 there, and it's in that position. I don't think it's going to help us very greatly, but see now we can place ones there. Hmm. So one, four, seven along here. So this is a one on four. I'm just wondering here, um, I've noticed this, obviously this square is very restricted, but that is a 1 or a 4. Um, and if we do the same exercise in terms of wondering what can go in uh, to the various cells on row 8 instead, look what we get, we get 2, 3, 4, 7 and 8. Now this square here uh, can take a 2, it can take a 4, and the three and the seven are ruled out, and the eight is ruled out here. So this is this is one four, this is two four. So I'm just wondering whether we can go further than that and find a triple, maybe in this three by three block, or um, or above it. So let's just check. Um, two three four seven eight. No, that's going to be a 247 there, so that doesn't look good. There's no 1 to check along here. Let's check the rest of the column. Um, I'm starting to pollute my pencil marks now as well, which I don't approve of, so remember that's 247. Um, 1, 2, 4, 6, and 8. 1, 2, 4 I'm happy with, because that meets those. 6 and 8. Ah, there you go. Look at that. If you look at column three here, there is a, an interesting triple that you can find just um, just by looking at what's available in three of the cells. So you get one, two, and four down this column in three different cells. Um, so we know that the numbers one, two, and four now are locked into the, these three places, and that effectively gives us six givens now in column three. Uh, and the numbers we that we're left with finding are the numbers uh, 6, 8, and 9. But before we do that, we can also note that there's a pencil marked 1 in this cell. Now that can no longer be a 1, because we know that the 1 is in one of these three cells. So we're able to eliminate that and place this one in over here. Um, and let's come back to the 6, 8, 9. You see that's got to be 6 or 9. Ah, this cell here has to be an 8. So let's put that in. That's going to be very useful. That gives us an 8 and a 7 like that. That gives us a 7 and a 2 here. I imagine, in fact, look, and that 7 is unwinding there. So, in fact, I think that is going to be the critical step because now we can complete column, sorry, row, uh, 
row nine as well. Once this seven is in, there's no longer a possibility for a one to go in here. So that must be that way around. You can see that's going to give us a four and a six, and the whole thing is collapsing down. So quite uh, that is interesting. I can see why this puzzle was was problematic because just to go back to it, um, there may have been uh, there may be a hidden single, there may be um, a naked single, or, or something else more straightforward than that. But I was a bit lucky to spot that triple. Um, I spotted it because I was sort of doing the boring legwork you sometimes have to do on these puzzles where you're sort of looking at the open cells and wondering what can go into them and I noticed there was a correspondence between these two cells and that got um, the spider sense tingling um, but the one thing I will say is that this method of notation again is not going to help you very much with this uh, with spotting hidden triples of that nature um, so that that is also ringing a bell with the video we did a couple of days ago on the grand final puzzle where there was an X-wing that popped up where again in order to get to the X-wing and, and do something useful with it you had to find I think in that instance it was a double that appeared um, in, in, a, in a row, it was a row in two different 3x3 three three blocks and it's this or that sort of thing this notation is a little bit weak on. It's much stronger uh, uh, finding other forms of logic. So another good puzzle. Thanks for watching. Do let us know, especially if you manage to solve this puzzle um, you know, in say three or four minutes, which would make you very competitive in terms of the national championship. Um, or if you found another way to solve it more efficiently than I did, definitely be interested in that too. Thanks again for watching. We'll be back soon with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.